Hi everyone, welcome to Church Online. It's Sunday again and we're so glad you've joined us. Come and join our team as we worship together. Hi family, hi friends, hi church. We're so glad that you're streaming in. We're so glad that you could be a part of this. Wherever you may be, wherever you may find yourself, what you lean in, what you trust God in the season for your healing, for your breakthrough, for your miracle, our God remains faithful, amen. Let's praise him together with one voice.
to you, God. We know that you will never let us go. You will never fail us. You will never forsake us. And you keep to every promise that you make. For you are faithful, God. Thank you. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me. You never fail. Sing it out together with one voice. Walking around. Walking around these walls. I thought by now they're fall. But you and i 
Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me. Yeah. I oh, never will forget. You never fail me, yeah. The faithful God, I trust you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Father, we thank you that you are faithful, that you are a man who keeps you his every promise and every word that you say, God, comes to true. We thank you for every promise, Lord, that you've spoken over our lives. And we stand on those promises. We stand on your word. And we know, God, that you will see us through. Because you've seen us through before. And you will see us through again and again and again and again. Because you are faithful, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for every home. Thank you for every heart. For every person, God. Whatever trouble they may be going through, Lord, we know that you are beside us. And you will move the mountains once again, in Jesus' name. Amen. What a powerful song. What powerful words to declare in a time like this. And we're not just singing songs and just lyrics that are meaningless. But this is truth. This is the word of God. And we stand on that word of God. And we stand on God's promises. I've seen him move. He moved the mountain. And I believe that he will do it again. This virus, our God will move it. Our God will bring our solution. Our God remains faithful and we can trust in him. I don't know what you're faced with. Whatever mountain that may be in front of you, whatever circumstances that you may be going through, maybe your marriage is falling apart. Maybe your business is going through a tough time. But one thing I do know that our God he's beside you if you put your trust in him he will see you through this time when the Israelites were faced with the sea and Pharaoh was closing in on them there's a powerful thing that happens in Exodus 14 in verse 13 it says do not be afraid stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today the Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. The Lord will fight for you. All you got to be is just be still. Just trust Him. Just hold on to Him. And He will get you through this. He will get us through this. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. So would you lift up your hand wherever you may find yourself and just trust God together. Heavenly Father, I bring every need before you, God. There is no need that is too difficult for you, God. There is no problem that is too big for you to solve. We know, God, that you have seen us through before, and you will see us through this time. We put our trust in you, not on medicines, not on doctors. Our trust is in you, your God. We thank you, Lord, that your word shall not return unto you void, but it shall accomplish that which you have sent it out to do, God. We trust in your promises, we trust in your word, and we trust in you. Answer us, God. Bring us healing, God. Deliver us, God. Save us, God. Restore us, God. We put all our hope in you. You are faithful. Amen and amen and amen. Hello, church. Wasn't worship incredibly special today? We love the fact that you've joined us. Welcome to the service. And we know that today you're going to be helped and encouraged. Now we're a couple weeks into lockdown and we just miss everyone. That's right. We just want to hear from you. So let us know how you are doing. If there's something that you trust in God for, let us know so that we can pray with you. Or if you've experienced breakthrough, let us know so that we can celebrate with you. 
head over to the Rivers Church website and every campus streaming page has got an avenue for you to submit your prayer requests and praise reports. We are a family and we want to do this journey with you. That's right. Now, another great way that you can do that is through the Rivers Church app. On the app, you can submit your prayer request and your praise reports, but so much more. You can get daily encouragements. You can track your discipleship journey. You can give through the app. You can even stream the services through the app. So if you haven't downloaded it, head over to your Apple App Store or your Google Play Store and download it today. Now, it was incredibly special on Good Friday where we could celebrate communion together as the body of Christ, even though we were in different homes. And we've got communion coming up again next weekend. Yes, it was incredibly special and we just want to encourage you to prepare for next weekend. So set aside some crackers or bread and some grape juice so that we can experience that special moment together again. That's good. Well, church, we're going to continue with our worship today and Pastor Andre and Pastor Vilma are going to encourage us in our giving. Well, as we come around our giving again today, various relief funds have been started up and people have responded with incredible emotion giving to them, millions have come in through them, uh, television ones and government ones, and they're fantastic and they do a lot of good work. But we've had a relief fund that's been running every day, in fact, every month for many years, called the Rivers Foundation. And when you give and you tithe, you give into those relief funds and you've been doing it regularly. So we don't want you to just sow into any fund because you don't know how it's administered, you don't know where the money's going. But with the Rivers Foundation, you can be guaranteed every rand is going into the mouth of a child or into the life of a needy person. No salaries or any kind of expenses are taken from that money. So we want you to sow into good soil of the Rivers Foundation and Rivers Church. And we don't want you to just give emotionally or sporadically. We want you to give systematically. So we're going to read a verse now from 1 Corinthians chapter 16 to guide us in our giving today. Reading from verse 1, it says, Now about the collection for the Lord's people... Do what I told the Galatian churches to do. On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, saving it up, so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. Then when I arrive, I will give letters of introduction to the men you approve and send them with your gift to Jerusalem. You know, the first thought that comes to mind here is giving is meant to be regular. The first day of the week, you know, it's so easy for selfishness to set in. And uh, so once a week is a very, very good habit for us to have when we give to the kingdom of God. That's so true um, because it's so easy for us to lose that, that regularity. So it's meant to be regular. second thing that we read from this text is giving is meant to include us all. It says each one should set aside a sum. So it's not just the rich people who give, those who are in a very good position, those who don't have any hard times. All of us have hard times. All of us face challenges in the current lockdown. And we need to be regular. And it needs to be inclusive of all of us. Yes. And thirdly, giving is meant to be planned because it says here that we need to set aside a sum. So, so you know, we need to save it up. And a giving... To the Lord is putting him first, not last. This is not something we do at the end of a month when we have splashed out on ourselves or paid for our own needs. We, we prioritize God and put him first. So good, babe. It's so good. It's not an afterthought. Number four, the fourth thing here about giving that comes from this text is giving is meant to be proportionate. So we're not ask, uh, God's not asking us to give anything that uh, we haven't got. It says according to, in proportion to your income. So we all give a tithe. Everyone gives 10%. That's in proportion to what you earn. Whether you earn a tiny bit or you earn a massive amount, we all give. And then we give offerings according to what we can earn. God's not asking us for anything that we don't have. And then lastly here, number five, giving is always a gift. Paul talks about this gift that he's going to send. It's not payment. It's not, it's not something we're forced to do, we have to do. But it's a gift we give and then that money is a gift we can continue to give to others. We can gift our staff, we can gift the poor, and we can all do something together. So I trust that you'll prepare, that you've got something ready. We give by SnapScan. When we're sitting watching the message, we load the app on, so you can do that today. You can see the various means on the screen. The app is the easiest. So I'm going to pray with you as we sow into good soil of Rivers Church and the Rivers Foundation. Father, thank you for every giver. 
online that's watching and that's being generous. Thank you that we can be regular, we can be generous, we can give in proportion, and we can give as a gift. And we love you, Lord. We give to bless your kingdom. Thank yes. you for every giver. Yes. Reward them, meet their needs, provide for them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for your giving. Now we're going to go to a funny video clip where our team has decided to prepare masks. Now that's the team across all the campuses and they've decided to teach us how to prepare masks to ensure that we're safe from COVID-19. Let's have a look. Like talk like you're going to talk to me? One, two, mic check. Scene one, take. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Um, wow. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Hi church. As you can see, things have gotten pretty wild here during lockdown. As staff. In support of the Rose Foundation. To prevent the spread of coronavirus. And further playing our part in helping others. We've got a great initiative that would love for you to be part of. Many studies have shown that wearing a face mask, even a simple one made of cloth, it can help reduce the. Uh, been shown in recent studies wearing a face mask makes a big difference in curbing the spread of the COVID-19 virus so today we'll be making a face mask together ones that you do not have to sew sometime soon we'll be collecting as many of these uh, sometime soon we'll be collecting when we come back as a church we'll be able to bring them and distribute them to the communities so before we get started you need a piece of cloth or a bandana, some material, some old pants, or a face cloth, little scarf. You can cut your husband's t-shirts. Uh, we we don't do that here. Make sure that it's at least 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters. And then you simply need two hair, hair ties, hair things, these things that the ladies use for their hair, or elastics, or hair bands that you got from your daughter. Whatever you can find in your house. So step one, fold your piece of material in half. Step number two, fold one long end to the middle. Take the other long end and fold it into the middle, making sure that they meet in the middle. Then step number three, you flip it over. And <laughs> you do it all again. Taking the two long sides, fold it into the middle. And then you're going to fold the opposite end into the center as well, where they just match up. Step number four. You can then take your elastics or string you're going to slip them over the end and make sure they're about 12 centimeters from the end likewise on the other side then flip it over thereafter you take your two edges tag the edges toward the middle and then you're going to fold them into one another and once you're done with that you're going to slip your mask on and clip it over your ears like so and you pull the top and the bottom to create the face mask. <laughs> My ears aren't big enough. <laughs> and there you have it. If you would like to donate your face mask, please make sure you sew a seam onto the edge to keep the elastic in place and cut off the extra fabric. Happy making your masks. Stay healthy. We can't wait to connect with you once again. Be safe, be healthy, God bless. I'm gonna go deliver mine. Well, as we come around the word today, I'm so excited to share this message with you because it's just burning in my heart and I think it'll be a great encouragement to you because most of us are facing similar feelings and emotions during this lockdown. I was reading that they did a survey of 501 adults, the Mitchum Antiperspirant and Deodorant Company. They surveyed these people and they asked them, how much stress do you have in your life? And when they collated all the information, they found that only 5% of all the people they surveyed said they had no stress in their lives. 5%, 95% of the people said we have huge stress and some said we have medium stress. Isn't that amazing? I think a lot of us are facing stress in our lives at the moment and it's a very stressful time. Stress is something that happens to you not when you're out and about sometimes, 
but when you're in, in your home facing COVID-19. The Bible doesn't talk about stress. It never uses the word stress, but it talks about anxiety, it talks about worry and cares and burdens, and it addresses those because we all face them. You know, we can be in our homes right now and have a tremendous amount of stress because we're worrying about the future. What's going to happen when we get out? Will we be able to do business? Will we be able to pick up? What does the future look like? Is there going to be enough money? Those are the stresses and the concerns that people are currently carrying under COVID. And I want to help you with that today and talk to you about that a little bit. And I've entitled the message today, Where to Look in Times of Stress? Because you've got to have the right perspective and you've got to look in the right direction when you're stressed because stress makes you skittish. It makes you go in different directions and you behave like a frightened sheep almost when you go, well, what are we going to do? We need to be a bit sober and we need to look in the right direction. Now, I was reading in Miriam Webster's dictionary the definition of stress, a physical, chemical, or emotional factor that causes bodily or mental tension and maybe a factor in disease causation. So we can suffer in our health with the manifestations of stress that's going on even being at home. And that's not God's best for our lives. Hans Sale is an endocrinologist, and he, way back in 1936, he said this. He said, it's the non-specific response of the body to any demand for change. Non-specific. Things happen. You get skin rash. You eat too much. Those are all responses to change and especially to stress. And there are a lot of stressful emotions that people are experiencing. I don't know about you, but from what I can gather, people are experiencing despair, hopelessness, fear, anxiety, apprehension, what's going to happen. And uh, business people are frustrated. They, they're concerned about their responsibilities, their staff. And the future is not quite clear. So stress is a natural result and causes us tremendous pressure. Eckhart Tolle summarized the stress we're facing right now. I thought it was pretty amazing. And uh, he's an author. He said this, stress is caused by being here, but wanting to be there. I think that is just so true of the kind of stress we're facing right now. Now, I don't know about you, but some of the passages in the Bible, when you get to know them, you can kind of go, oh, well, I know that. And it doesn't really... Uh, enter your spirit, and, and you don't really receive. But I'm going to read a very common passage today, probably the most well-known passage in the Bible, not John 3.16, but probably the most well-known psalm in the Bible. And I'm going to encourage us from this psalm, because this psalm is probably one that everybody knows, from, from people who don't go to church to people who go to church. Psalm 23. It's 3,000 years old. It's pretty amazing. Just six verses, 100 words in English, 55 in the Hebrew, and uh, David here teaches us in the psalm who God is, but he also teaches us who we are. Then he teaches because of who God is, what God does, and then he puts us in perspective, and we get to understand why we experience stress, because in Psalm 23, David describes us as sheep. So I want to read it today, and I just want you to just note for a moment before we get into it, 28 times personal pronouns are used in this psalm, like I, my, me, he. And so 25% of the psalm is taken up with personal. God is a very personal God with these personal pronouns. 28 times they mention. So Psalm 23, reading from the NIV, the Lord is my shepherd. He's not just a shepherd. He's my shepherd. I lack nothing. Isn't that encouraging during COVID? He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. You see, when you're stressed, he refreshes the soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, some people are going through that right now. As uh, He says, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Notice it starts with the Lord is and ends with forever. 
Like in a parenthesis, everything we need is encapsulated in this amazing psalm. And I'd encourage you to memorize it. I'd encourage you to read it and get to know it. I'd encourage you to pray it because it's a powerful remedy for stress. So where do we look in times of stress? Firstly, number one, never lose sight of the person of God. Keep looking at the person of God. I'm using P's today. But I'm really saying, look at the character of God. The Lord is my shepherd. Of all the things he, he could use to describe God, he says he's a shepherd and he's my shepherd. He's not just a shepherd, he's my shepherd. Very, very personal. And then he says, I lack nothing. In fact, in the uh, New International Reader's Version, it says this, he gives me everything I need. Everything I need. What do you need today? God is your shepherd. And a shepherd is an amazing, amazing person. You know what a shepherd does? A shepherd looks after sheep, and without a shepherd, sheep are helpless. They are basically dead meat without a shepherd. And a shepherd cares for them at night. He cares for them during the day. And David says, you know what? The Lord is my shepherd. In my life, he's the one who cares for me night and day. And that's why I'm not stressed, even though I'm a king, I've got responsibilities. Stress doesn't get the better of me because I keep looking at him. I keep looking at the one who cares for my life. And you know, a shepherd's job is twofold. He provides affection for sheep. Sheep need affection. And they need a lot of encouragement. And a shepherd knows sheep by name. You'll call them by name. And then secondly, a shepherd provides for them every single day. When the shepherd wakes up, his first goal is where can I find food for my sheep and how can I protect my sheep? And so David says, that's who God is. During COVID-19, if you're filled with apprehension and fear and doubt, God is your shepherd night and day. And he cares about you, knows you by name, and wants to come to you and give you affection and take care of you. And it's wonderful here in Psalm 34 and verse 9, it says this, those who fear him lack nothing. And you know what a shepherd does is he gets up in the morning and he's either taking the sheep to, to provision, to pasture, or they're in pasture. He's either about to feed them or he's busy in a place with them where they are feeding. And today, if you're struggling with finances, you're worried about money, the Lord is your shepherd. He's either taking you to pasture or you're in pasture. And if you're worried about when we come out of this lockdown, trust him. Trust him because we're on our way to provision if he is our shepherd. Now, the interesting thing about the Hebrew language is it doesn't always come across in the English but notice on the screen with me here, the word hand, the word friend, and the word shepherd. Can you see the root of friend is hand, and the root of shepherd is friend, because friendship is about giving, one hand washing the other, hand in hand. And so friendship is hand in hand, but what the shepherd is actually saying, what the Bible is actually saying about the shepherd here, is that he is your hand in hand friend, so that's why you'll lack nothing. Listen, when you're stressed about finances and the future, you need to know that he is your shepherd. And, and we, when we grew up, we used to hear the King James Version, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Well, that sounds like a, everything I want. No, actually it's an old English word that means this, I shall not be abandoned. And you know, God doesn't abandon us because he's our shepherd. If a shepherd abandons sheep, they don't stand a chance, not even for a day. They'll be devoured by wolves. They'll fall down into a hole. They'll they walk off the edge of a cliff. So God cares about us. He wants to make sure our needs are met, and he will never, ever abandon us. The great author, J.I. Packer, I'm sure you've heard of J.I. Packer, amazing author, uh, said this, God has not abandoned us any more than he abandoned Job. He never abandons anyone on whom he has set his love. Nor does Christ, the good shepherd, ever lose track of his sheep. You see, God likes to view himself as a shepherd. David saw him as a shepherd. God portrays himself as a shepherd. It's not surprising to shepherds that the Lord revealed himself when Jesus was born. And then Jesus comes, and in order to show who God is, he's the good shepherd, he's the great shepherd, and he's the chief shepherd. So God really wants us to get this. The Lord is my shepherd. Don't stress because he'll care for you. He'll look after you. He's got a hand that he's going to bless you with. He's your friend. 
and he takes care of you. Now, what I've noticed is this. When Jesus was on the earth and he was about to be crucified, in Matthew's gospel, he warned his disciples about a prophecy that was coming. And in Mark chapter 14, I want you to notice this. He says, you will all fall away, speaking to the 12. Jesus told him, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. In other words, Jesus is going to be arrested, going to be crucified, and his sheep are just going to run. And that's exactly what happened. The, the flock was scattered. And you know what I've discovered? The enemy's ploy is exactly the same today. He's trying to strike at the person, the, the, the character, the, the person of Christ. Strike at it, shake it up, make, it, make Jesus less than he is. Guess what? The sheep will scatter. And God wants us to know that our eyes need to be on the person of Christ then we will be stress-free because we'll know the Lord is my shepherd. The second thing that I read in this psalm here that we need to do, who to look in times of stress, never lose sight of the peace of God. Never lose sight of the peace of God. Notice in verse 2, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. You know, this really speaks about the quietness that sheep need. Sheep are very skittish. They're very nervous creatures. And what a shepherd does is he doesn't just take them to eat. He takes them to places where they can just lie down. And he just sits on the hill and they know he's there. There's nothing happening. There's no danger. And sheep need peace. And as God's sheep, we also need peace in times of stress. And you need to know the shepherd is there. And he's going to lead you. He makes me lie down. The shepherd makes them lie down. And it says in green pastures. Most people think, oh, that's where there's a lot of grass where they can eat. No, no, no. Those green pastures are not for eating. They're for resting. And sheep don't just eat. They need some rest. They need to calm their skittish and jittery souls. And then it says here, he leaves me beside quiet waters. You know, the shepherd will take them to pools of water next to the river where the water's not running fast because it'll go up their nose. It'll end up on their wool and get them wet and then they'll fall into the water. So the whole picture here is one of God is your shepherd, but he wants to calm your soul. He wants to calm your spirit. And he says, he refreshes my soul. Sheep are fragile and, and they get very jittery. And here basically he's saying, like we read in the King James, he restores my soul. Now he puts back what life takes out. And that's what the Holy Spirit does through Jesus, the good shepherd. He comes into our lives and he brings the water of the Holy Spirit and he brings a calmness and he brings a strength when we are jittery. And we must keep looking for the peace of God because when you lose your peace, that's when stress takes over. The third thing that we read in this amazing, amazing psalm, just six verses, is never lose sight of human powerlessness. You see, if you've got to focus on the shepherd, you also need to recognize who we are. And the Bible here describes us as sheep, not very flattering, but pretty accurate. Now, I have to say this. I don't always feel like a sheep because at times I've got a clear vision. I know what I'm doing. I know where I want to go. I'm disciplined. And, you know, I do try and live my life in that way, regulate my diet, regulate exercise, my thinking and so on. But you know when it really comes down to it? I realize we're all just sheep. We get easily affected we're very skittish. It doesn't take much to get us unnerved. You know, here's COVID. What's happening? Will I get infected? Will my family die? What will I do? I've got challenges. Now I've got this on top of it. What about my future? What about the business? What about the church? And we start to go down the road and we realize, man, we really are just sheep. And um, the Bible describes us as sheep because we get easily stressed. Have you noticed that? No matter who you are, you can get easily stressed even being at home. And if you were to describe sheep, I've written a couple of descriptions down. Sheep are very vulnerable, extremely vulnerable. You know, they don't have claws, they don't have horns, they can't growl, they can't bark back and, 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 and scare a predator. They, they're clumsy, you know, they, they top heavy. If they get a bit of sand or water on them, they fall over, they end up with their legs up, they end up in pits, they can't get out of the pit by themselves. They've got very little ability compared to a dog or another kind of creature. They, they're pretty helpless. And here's the thing I've noticed about sheep that, 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 that relates to human powerless. Sheep panic very quickly. They scatter and they panic and they're extremely jittery. And I've noticed that with human beings. They will put on a good front, put on a suit, put on a brave front, you know, speak to the camera, put the best things on Instagram. But most people are extremely skittish and are easily affected 
by challengers. That's why we need a shepherd, because without a shepherd, sheep are actually quite helpless. And the best defense a powerless sheep has against the challenges of life is this. It's to stay focused on the shepherd and near the shepherd. And secondly, to stay in the fold. The fold being the church, the protection of God's house with shepherds under the great shepherd. And, and, and to be part of a community that cares for you. Because when things go wrong and you start to get stressed, you get your eyes on the person, you enjoy his peace. And then you realize, man, I'm just a sheep. I shouldn't feel bad because I feel this way. Um, you know, it's, most people are experiencing this, and most people experience these challenges. Let me remind you, you know that sheep, when they get attacked, they're so powerless that even sometimes when they survive an attack, they die from panic. And we've got to be careful because I've been reading recently that between 75% and 90% of the people who go to a doctor go to a doctor because of stress-related conditions. It's manifest in your body as an illness, but it often comes from stress because really we are just powerless sheep. And what can happen is we hear the news, we watch the reports, we see the negativity, and then we all start bleating. And then it's like, bah, and everybody's scattering and everybody's nervous. But we need to realize that God cares for us and he is our shepherd and he's always presented himself like that. I love the prophet Ezekiel. Because he talks about so many serious things. But here he talks about the Lord as a shepherd and the care that God promises to us powerless sheep as the shepherd. In Ezekiel 34, he says, As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I myself, he says, will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost. Bring back the strays, I'll bind up the injured, and strengthen the weak. So here the Lord points out that we are powerless sheep, that we need him, that we need rest from stress, that we need binding up, that we sometimes get lost, but he will do it for us because he is our shepherd. Number four, the fourth thing today, and I hope you're receiving something and you're being encouraged right in your home as you watch this. The fourth thing we must never lose sight of and what we must look at when we're stressed is never lose sight of the protection and presence of God. Here David, obviously as a shepherd himself, knew how a shepherd operated. And he says in verse 3 and 4, he guides me along the right paths for his namesake. You know, sheep are known to just wander off wherever there's food. And we're like that. We just look for opportunity and then we end up in deep trouble. But here it says he guides me in the right paths. He protects us. He doesn't want us to fall down the cliff or into a hole. And then it says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. I won't get stressed. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So this talks here about the protection and the presence of God because he's with us. But then his rod and staff, they bring a comfort. Why? Because they offer some form of protection. And when you look at the tools of a shepherd, he's got a rod. Do you know what the rod's for? He'll crack the skull of a predator. If a wolf comes, you'll use that stick and he'll smack that wolf, crack its skull open because he values the sheep. And when the sheep see that rod in the hand of the shepherd, they're walking behind him. They can't see his face, but they can see the rod. They calm down. They, they're no longer jittery. They don't start panicking. They know. The shepherd's there, the rod's there. They also see the crook sticking up. It's usually curved. He uses that to pull them out of a hole. When they slide down a slope, he sticks it around them. Shoop, he pulls them up the slope, pulls them out of a pit, pulls them out of the water. When they see those things, they calm down because they realize he's with me and he protects me. And we need to know that during COVID-19, God is with us. And God will protect us because he is my shepherd. And we've got to keep our eyes on God's protection, not on the newscasts, and on God's presence. Because his presence comforts us like the presence of the shepherd comforts the sheep. You know, when sheep see the shepherd, they don't panic. They know he's there. He's the provider. He's the one who guides. He's the one who leads. We're going through a dark valley right now, the psalmist says. Can't see anything else. It's cold here. There's a chilly wind blowing. And the shadows are over us. But we know there he is, and he's got the tools. 
We need to have the same approach. We need to know that we have the great shepherd of the sheep, the Lord Jesus leading us, and he has the tools for our defense, and he has given us the Holy Spirit as the comforter. And he said in Matthew 28, Lo, I am with you even to the end of the age. And so God is with us. We mustn't be afraid. We must trust his presence and trust his protection. And number five, the fifth thing today, never lose sight of the provision of God. Here in the Psalms, we read again, it starts with, the Lord is my shepherd, I will lack nothing. But then it comes to this in verse 5 and 6. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. When things are tough, when things are against me, you provide. And he says, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. It's not half full, it's overflowing. And then he says, surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. You know, God is our provider. And the minute you start to think your provision is all in your hands, you make a mistake. Charles Spurgeon said this. He said, we have all things and abound, not because I have a good store of money in the bank, not because I have skill with which to win my bread, but because the Lord is my shepherd. Now, we know we need to work and we have to be uh, entrepreneurs and we have to really use our skill. But ultimately, he's the one who guides us and leads us to provision. And provision is spoken of in the psalm quite a bit because that's what a shepherd does. The first thing the shepherd does in the morning when he wakes up is he opens the sheepfold, he lets the sheep out, and his focus is on one thing, where can I take them for provision? Now, if God does that for us, when we wake, when we wake up in the morning, we can be sure the shepherd is there ready to take me, even though they're enemies. Recession is an enemy. Low cash flow is an enemy. Lockdown is an enemy. Business is not good. Cash flow is bad. Uh, the exchange rate is bad. People are talking and talking about all the enemies. But he says, I'll prepare a table in the midst of your enemies. And I'll anoint your head with oil. You say, well, what's that about? I'll keep your mind calm. Oil, was, what, what they did with the oil is they put it on the sheep's head. And all the worms and the bugs and the things that stuck that could get into their eyes and into their nose, that just fell off. And the sheep was unharassed. He was relaxed, he felt good, and he was provided for. And David says, you know, that's what God does for us. He provides, and we mustn't lose sight of this God of provision, even when there are shortages and their enemies and goods and services are going through an incredibly difficult time. God is our provider. And I love what he says here, goodness and love will follow me. You know, goodness and love, you don't see them, because sometimes we search for them. But goodness and love are following you. And if you don't currently see them, trust me, when COVID's over, if you keep your eye on the shepherd, goodness and love will eventually come and overtake you. And you'll go, oh, there you are. Because that's what shepherds do. They wake up in the morning and they provide and they care for their sheep. Lastly, as we come to a close, number six, never lose sight of the place God has for you. The person, the presence, the protection, the peace, and the provision, and the place. There's a place God's got for us. And he says here lastly, and I will dwell in the house, the house of the Lord forever. You know, that's twofold. On the earth, sheep have a pen. At night, they don't just sleep anywhere. They go into a pen and the door's locked. It's called a sheepfold. And we have a church. The church is the place that we belong to. We're not in the building at the moment, but we belong to the church, and that's the place God has got for us. You have a place. Don't disconnect from your place. But lastly, if anything should happen to you, and if anything should go wrong, and you're stressed about COVID, you have a place in heaven. There's a home here called the church, and there's a home there called heaven. As I wrap up today, I want to tell you an amazing story about a man called Morris Pink. He recently died at the age of 97, was one of those veterans that took part in World War II. He was a sailor. And on the two ships that he sailed on, both were hit by torpedoes and went down. When he was just 19, he was on the HMS Repulse, and it was hit by five torpedoes, and it was listening badly. He was three decks down, and he ran up quickly, got onto the boat, saw it was burning, it was listening, took off his clothes, because they were filled with oil, and he jumped into an oily sea, hoping to survive. Well, he was all alone in the sea. And um, can you imagine? He had to swim away from the ship. Otherwise, it would suck him down. 
And as he was floating in the water, he recounts it. And I want to read to you the story because this was like Pearl Harbor for the British. It happened near Malaysia. 800 uh, sailors were killed. So this was a very serious uh, attack by the Japanese. And he says when he was in the water, he recounts this. He says, there are times in your life when things don't go right and you feel all alone. I found myself alone in the water, not able to see anyone else. It was then that Psalm 23 came into my head and I realized I was not alone. He says, I had a shepherd. The Lord was my shepherd. I did not need to want. I was not in green pastures, but in oily waters, but he restored my soul. In other words, I wasn't stressed. Even though I was walking in the shadow of death, I was to fear no evil, for he was with me. So he had a sense that God was right there in those oily waters, these fires blazing, 800 soldiers killed. Then he says this, the rod and staff did not ring a bell with me until voices above me were shouting. He says, looking up, there was a big destroyer alongside me, HMS Electra, and its nets over the side allowed me to climb up on, onto safety. This was my rod and my staff, he says. He says, I didn't have a table set before me, but I did get a cup of the ship's cocoa. Then he says, since that day, goodness and mercy have followed me all the days of my life. And when I think back to that day, he says, I wonder what would have happened if I died. But then he says there again, the psalm had the answer. I would dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Man, Psalm 23 will keep you afloat and de-stress you when you're facing times of stress. Memorize it, pray it, remember it, and remember God is your shepherd. And hold on to him, keep your eye on him, keep your eye on his person, his presence, his provision, his protection, his peace, and you can know there's a place that he's got for you. And, and, and as, I, as I wrap up today, it's so important. You know, most people know Psalm 23, but not many people know the shepherd of Psalm 23. Many know that he is a shepherd, but they can't say he's my shepherd. And if today you might be disconnected from God, maybe you're stressed out, worried about things. Maybe you're stressed because of fear of death. What if I die from COVID? Oh gosh, I don't want to die. Well, he has a place for you. And you know what? Today, the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus, he's the one who's cleansed you. You know, sheep can't cleanse themselves. If sheep fall in mud, they can't cleanse themselves. The mud cakes on them, and unless they have a shepherd, they'll die. But the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus, cleansed us with his blood. And today he says, come, come, let me be your shepherd. Let me make it personal. Get to know me. Because he says in John 10, my sheep know me. They hear my voice and they follow me. If you'd like that today, let me pray with you. I'd love to pray with you. And all you need to do is just listen to me and agree with me by, in your heart or out loud if you can, say amen. I'm going to pray a prayer of you making the Lord your shepherd. Father, I thank you for the Lord Jesus, that good shepherd, that great shepherd, the chief shepherd of us, the sheep. I pray for every believer that you de-stress them today and that today the stresses would go and they know they've got someone that they can count on. Lord, for those that don't know you, may they invite you to be their shepherd, to be their personal shepherd. May they know the Lord is my shepherd, not just a shepherd, but my shepherd. Fill people's lives with your presence, Fill them with your power, forgive them, and may they know they've got a place, no matter what happens in their lives, that they can go to. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed the word today as I enjoyed preaching it. I hope it encouraged you and it helped you. And until next time, look forward to seeing you. Catch us on Instagram. Make sure you go on Instagram. We keep posting there. Keep people in touch. Let you know what's happening. River Santon, River Centurion, Rivers Kalami, all the campuses on there as well as possible man myself. Look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you. Have a fantastic day.